Okay, so we're presenting uh, a project on low rank semi definite programming. Uh, we're going to present uh, a brief introduction of what the problem is, some uh, relaxation methods, uh, preliminary pro uh, heuristic we're proposing, and some final thoughts on this. Let's start with uh, the introduction what is low rank semi definite programming? Uh, so if we consider uh, an, an, an SDP in the classic form that it was in class, which is a linear objective function and a set of linear uh, equality constraints and uh, positive semi-definiteness. And we add a, a rank constraint, which can be an equality rank constraint of an upper bound or, or, or rank constraint, which is what we're seeing here. Uh, this is a, a low rank semi-definite uh, program. Uh, this is useful to adequately formulate some problems. For instance, in electrical grids, uh, the optimal power flow can be exactly formulated as, an, as, a, as a positive semi-definite program with, with, uh, uh, with a rank constraint of, uh, of around one. It's also common in, in machine learning in principal component analysis and all the problems with sparsity, like low cardinality problems. The complication of adding this sort of constraints is that uh, rank constraints are not convex, which is easy to see in this uh, two by two example, where we have two rank one matrices, but a convex combination of these matrices has rank two. And then we, what we ask ourselves when we see this is, can we approach this problem by means of a convex relaxation? And uh, so we, let's see some, some relaxation methods that exist in the literature. Uh, uh, the first category we're going to look at is rank reduction. Uh, the idea here is to lift the rank constraint. So we have the classic SDP, uh, which will usually converge to a high uh, rank optimal solution, even if a low rank solution exists within, with interior point algorithms, which are common. Uh, so what we ask ourselves here is, can we infer any information regarding low rank solutions from this? In particular, can we obtain a low rank solution that is also optimal? Can we prove that no low rank solution exists? And, and can we get the best low rank solution from the optimal solution? Uh, we present here the, the results by, by these authors that we're citing here. The idea is then to start from a solution, an optimal solution X with high rank and find X plus a different optimal solution with lower rank. Let us start by saying that there's a limitation to this approach and is that finding a minimum rank solution in general is known to be NP hard. Uh, so we cannot uh, reasonably expect to find an algorithm that would perform well in every case. However, some results have been found, which we present here, uh, under, the, uh, under the key assumption that the null space of the low rank solution is, includes the null space of the, of the high rank solution, which does not generally hold, but it can be reasonable and useful in many cases. This is useful because under this ass assumption, we can express uh, the low rank constraint as the high rank constraint plus uh, alpha uh, V delta VT, where V VT is the orthogonal factorization of X, which is SDP. Uh, and we can think of delta as a step direction and alpha as a step length. You can see that in a minute in the, in the algorithm. Uh, so, so, so let's see the, the algorithm for rank reduction. What we're doing here is we're using some uh, some facts about the solution that we're looking for, but in particular, it has to be optimal, feasible, a positive, uh, semi-definite, and has to have a lower rank. And so we, uh, and what we do in the algorithm is uh, decrease rank in each iteration by means of this uh, uh, step direction delta and step length alpha that we compute uh, uh, in this way by finding it, by looking at the null space of the set of equality constraints. And we don't we don't get too much into it, but the, the idea here is that uh, the, if if a lower rank solution exists, we can, we can in many cases converge to it by means of this algorithm. Uh, these results also are helpful to to get to get to two uh, theorems. Uh, the one is there is an upper bound on the minimum rank solution of a of a semi definite program. Uh, if it is solvable, if it has an optimal solution, it has it, it, it verifies this upper bound number three here. And on the other hand, uh, we can we know that a, a solution X to a semi-definite program is unique if and only if it satisfies these two uh, solutions. And this is helpful to recognize whether a low rank solution uh, exists at all. Uh, that is that is uh, also optimal given the the high rank optimal solution. 
this can be useful in, certain, in certain applications to just recognize what if, if there's a solution with the required rank. So that, that's the first category. Now let's look at the second category of approaches, which uh, uh, maintains low rank throughout the entire algorithm. Other class of methods are the more material-based methods, in which the idea is to factor the decision variable as V times V transpose, where V now lies in this lower dimensional space. The number R can be either chosen to be an upper bound in the minimum rank solution as shown in case three. And if this is not the case, it's going to be just a, a heuristic. So with this new formulation, we can now see that the problem has both pros and cons. On the upside, the problem has smaller dimension than the original problem and has no cunning constraint to contend with. On the other hand, the problem has now become non-convex and clearly has introduced new non-linearities. To handle this, the authors propose the augmented Lagrangian method. And they show that for a specific y and sigma star, the local minimum of, of this augmented Lagrangian method, of this augmented Lagrangian function, is going to be the same as the solution in the problem formulation that we have just seen. So now the problem becomes of how do you compute these updates, these multiplier updates? This is given in algorithm two. And a key component in this algorithm is how to compute the minimum of this Lagrangian function. The authors propose a uh, use of the limited memory BFGS, which is an interior point method. Now we are ready to propose our new heuristic. This is some notation that I'm, we are going to be using through, throughout the rest of the presentation. And these are useful ideas that are going to give us insights into why this new heuristical method is going to, to work. And let me highlight these conjugate relations in which the one I want to be focusing on is on the bidual of the rank function, which turns out to be the nuclear one norm function. This is going to be important because remember that we want to convexify our problem, and the bidual is going to be the best convex approximation to this rank function. Also, we have these projection functions, which essentially are going to project onto low rank, dimension, low, low rank dimensions. And we have first the classical Eckhart John Kandinsky result, in which essentially it's a truncation of the singular value decomposition. And but we can also have more complicated projections, for example, this one below, in which we want to maintain both low rank and also positive semi-definite. And this type of problems is handled via conjugate graded methods, which is nice because this is going to be computationally not very expensive. And this is a key component in our proposed heuristic. So the heuristic that we are going to propose is going to realize to relax this rank constraint. Stos is going to keep this convexity structure, but at the same time, we want to keep low rank of all the solutions. And this is going to be achieved by proje projecting into these low rank spaces. The relaxed problem is this. And in the case where we have a positive semi-definite matrix, then the nuclear one norm function is going to be equivalent to the trace norm. And this structure, as we see it in problem formulation five, is going to be the classical SDP. So we are going to aim to solve it via interior point method. For example, we first want to compute a neutral direction over this space of this system that I, we are writing over here. Note that the last constraint is going to be nonlinear, but Anyways, this is the classical SDP interior point method formulation. And once we have this Newton direction, we're going to recover visibility in the low rank region 
by projection onto by by using the projection of one of these matrices. So to wrap it up, we are going to compute the Newton direction and then project onto the feasibility low rank region. And this is the essence of the algorithm that we are proposing now. Okay, so in summary, uh, we reviewed two kinds of approaches to solve uh, rank constrained uh, SDPs. On the one hand, uh, the first category, which is rank reduction methods, uh, uh, which relies on lifting the constraints, solving a relaxed uh, complex problem, obtaining a high rank solution, and then recovering a low, a low rank solution from this uh, initial solution, which in general is an NP hard problem, but some algorithms exist which perform well in many cases. And by doing this analysis, we also find some results uh, but in certain uh, applications can inform the conclusion of whether a low rank solution exists or not. And on the other hand, the Bourbon-Taylor approach and similar approaches, which maintain low rank solution throughout the algorithm execution uh, at the cost of giving up uh, convexity and linearity and hence uh, the global optimality, uh, optimality guarantee. We also tried to combine these both approaches to give a different heuristic. And to end this presentation, we just want to explore another variant of algorithm three, in which now the problem in consideration factors the decision variable X as V times V transpose, allowing us to leave the PSD constraint. This is going to be a benefit in the Newton direct in the computation of the Newton direction of our algorithm, but we have to pay the price by introducing these nonlinearities. These are our references. And thank you very much for your attention.